David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, today I have another pen from a company that was new to me. Um, I've had a number of pens like that lately and uh, a couple more coming up in the near future. I think it's fun to discover new brands and expand your horizons past the, the popular pens and brands that you hear everyone talking about on a regular basis. Uh, the brand that I'll be discussing today is online. Uh, and I have more than just a pen for you. I have uh, a calligraphy set from them called the Vision Cork. Uh, what I'm going to do is go over the parts and features of this calligraphy set. I'll talk about what I care for and what I don't care for. I'll show some measurements, some size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. Uh, and stay tuned because I will be giving this set away courtesy of online who provided this set to me for review uh, and then to give away to one of you. Uh, the online pen company is based in Germany and was founded in 1991. Uh, at that time, in the early 90s, the term online didn't have the same internet connotations it does today. Uh, and the founders, Alexander and Thomas Batch, I hope, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, you know, they chose the online name to kind of evoke the feeling of something modern uh, and uh, up to date in regard to writing. While Online doesn't have a strong presence in the United States market. They are rather large in Europe. Uh, I was reading an article from a magazine back in 2009 said that they uh, actually produce over 3 million pens a year. Now, the company offers a wide variety of writing instruments, so not all of those were fountain pens, but it helps you understand that this is a rather large writing instrument and stationary company. The online Vision Cork Calligraphy set arrives in this unique box. Uh, it's a hard cardboard and kind of resembles a book. Uh, on the front it has the online logo and then on the side it says online and calligraphy. Uh, it opens up and here we have the set. Uh, there is the pen and then there are uh, two additional nib units uh, and then there is a bottle of their house brown ink. Um, there are some uh, filling instructions that come here, and it does show a converter in the filling instructions, uh, but I don't believe the set comes with a converter. At least this one didn't, and uh, the info on their site doesn't specifically state that it does. So, let's start by taking a look at this pen, and then we'll get to the extra stuff. Um, here is the online Vision Cork. Uh, they offer the Vision in a number of different materials and finishes, uh, and this one uh, having the barrel of the pen covered in a thin layer of cork. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the cap. Uh, on the cap we have a nice bowed clip. Um, and that uh, it's all solid and uh, one piece here, uh, which I like. Um, the clip actually hinges, which I think is cool. Uh, and I really like the design of having this all be a single piece of metal. Uh, the clip is actually stamped with the online logo. Uh, the cap itself is metal. I'm thinking it's aluminum. Uh, it's rather light, with the vast majority of the weight being taken up by the clip here at the end. Uh, it has a nice brushed matte finish that I like. Uh, then there is a uh, transition into a band, which is actually part of the barrel. It's not a cap band. Uh, and there are five indentations around the cap, or actually around the band, excuse me. Uh, then we have the cork. Um, cork is actually uh, like an inner bark of the cork oak tree. Um, the material is hydrophobic uh, and buoyant and elastic as well as fire retardant. Um, in, in order to harvest cork, they have to kind of wait until the tree is at least 25 years old. Uh, and then the cork is kind of stripped away from a, a tree every nine years. Uh, in a way, it's almost like a rushi to where they have to constantly uh, manage their resources. Um, something interesting I learned is that 80% of the world's cork is produced in Spain and Portugal. Um, the cork barrel has an interesting feel to it. Um, it does have a cork feel, which is kind of soft and warm and a, a bit rubbery. Now, I wasn't sure how the cork would react if it came in contact with ink. Uh, you know, would it stain? Would it be difficult to clean? And uh, I tested it with a little brown ink, and just in case it stained, you wouldn't be able to notice. Uh, and it did come off using some moisture and some light rubbing. Um, the cork on this barrel is rather thin. Uh, it isn't a solid piece, but a number of rectangular bands kind of wrapped around. Uh, cork has a tendency to have uh, pits and holes in it. Uh, some of the holes are filled with uh, a bit of adhesive, 
Uh, and I really didn't notice this with the naked eye, but after taking a look at, at some of the material under a microscope, you can see that there are small areas of the material that contain holes, and you can actually see the underlying woven material uh, as well as the adhesive. Uh, I actually thought that looked kind of cool in the microscope. Um, then we have the end of the barrel, which is metal and has a small indentation on the slightly rounded end. Uh, the cap snaps off, uh, and here we have the steel nib. Uh, you know, I showed it when I opened the box, but this pen comes with three different nibs, uh, all stubs. It comes with a 0.8, a 1.4, as well as a 1.8. Just a reminder, if you're not familiar with the difference between a stub nib and an italic nib, uh, while a stub nib won't have any tipping, uh, it's more rounded, as opposed to an italic nib, which will have more of a squared off look uh, and more sharp and crisp edges. You know, while I haven't come across too many italic nibs that I personally care for, um, I find the stubs included with this set to be very nice. Uh, the, that 0.8 is decent. Uh, I found this 1.4 to be outstanding. Um, and, and I was having a few issues with the 1.8, but I'll go over what I was experiencing with that nib during the writing sample. Uh, and then here's a look at the plastic feed. Um, it is nice that they include uh, complete nib sections for the replacement nibs, uh, as opposed to just having the nibs only that you need to pull out in order to swap. Uh, so this makes changing the nibs a lot easier. Um, this is a cartridge converter pen. Uh, it came with uh, two standard international cartridges, uh, but as I mentioned, mine didn't arrive with a converter, but standard international converters are easy to come by uh, if one is not included. Um, you know, there is a lower part to the section, which really isn't designed to be gripped uh, because there's a little bit too much of a drop off. Um, the section is plastic and I find it to be fairly comfortable. And the pen is plenty long enough to use unposted. Uh, and it is fairly light. The cap does post and it does post securely. Um, and even though the majority of the cap's weight is on the very back of the cap, uh, I don't find that it throws off the balance of this pen too much to uh, use posted. Now, with other pens that have a posting mechanism like this, I've noticed that it can have a tendency to make a popping noise when unposting. Like, uh, take for example this Faber-Castell Basic. Um, this one really pops when uh, unposting here. So you can really hear that that one pops. Uh, and that um, in regard to the vision, it makes a little noise, but nothing that I would really categorize as a loud pop like the basic does. The online vision cork set retails for just over $70. Uh, if that were the price for just the pen, then I would feel that that was a bit much for what the pen alone has to offer. But taking into consideration that the set also includes two additional nibs and a small bottle of ink, then the $70 price becomes much more reasonable. Okay, in regard to the giveaway, uh, I thought I would do something a little bit different. Uh, first of all, you can enter by leaving a comment here on YouTube, uh, or if you'd like, you can find me on Instagram, uh, and you can find me at, at @figboot11, uh, and find my recent post showing a picture of a portion of this very pen, uh, and you subscribe to my Instagram feed and leave a comment on that post as well. Um, if you do it in both places, then you'll get two entries into the drawing. In regard to a topic, uh, I do plan on doing a Q&A here soon, so let me know what questions you have. Uh, they could be fountain pen related or not. Uh, the topic is not a requirement, just a suggestion. Uh, today is Saturday, January 13th, 2018, and you have until end of day on Tuesday the 16th to enter. Um, at that time, I'll randomly select a winner from the combined YouTube and Instagram entries and contact you via the method of your winning entry. Good luck! Uh, thanks again. Go out to online for providing this set for review and for giveaway. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to miss this set. Uh, I've enjoyed using it. Uh, I'm very tempted to pick one up for myself, um, just due to the, uh, the quality of the stub nibs alone. So now it's time for some measurements, some size comparisons, and then a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the online Vision Cork. 
Um, I had mentioned Instagram uh, and that uh, on a daily basis, what I'll do is I will uh, have my pens that I bring to work each day. And uh, these next five pens are ones that I will be bringing to work uh, this next week. So you'll see these on Instagram each day. The first one is the Classic Pens LB5 Tensui. Uh, then the next pen is the... Uh, the Pilot Vanishing Point Raiden Water Surface. Uh, and then next is the uh, Franklin Christoph Model 66 Stabilis in the blue, which was a special uh, pen show limited edition or special pen show model that I picked up last year. Then in regard to two other pens I'll be bringing to work next week, uh, I have a Mont Blanc 146, then I have a Visconti Opera Metal Silver Shadow. And then finally, just for comparison, here it is with a Lamy All-Star. Here we go with the writing sample for the online vision cork. And this is the 1.4 millimeter lens. Uh, and this is just a, uh, a blue cartridge. I'm assuming this is just the, uh, the house online blue. So we'll call it blue online. Uh, and then here we go with the writing sample for the 1.4. Um, I find it to write very smooth, uh, and I like the fact that it seems to be rather forgiving. Sometimes with a, uh, a stub, you, you need to find that sweet spot, and I find that this one is fairly forgiving. And you can see here that you can get some decent line variation out of here. I did get a little bit of railroading here at the end, but in regard to uh, the horizontal and vertical stripes, you can see that there's a, different, a massive difference there. Uh, and in regard to wetness, uh, this is a fairly wet pen as well. Uh, and then in regard to some fast writing, you see I had a couple of issues, but then, you know, with a stub like that, then sometimes uh, when it's well, a large amount of ink is coming through, then uh, it can be challenging for the feed to keep up. Uh, in regard to some of the other nib sizes here, uh, you know, I have these outside of the pen, so let's, or outside of a pen, just the, the, the section by itself, so we'll see how well these write, but this one here is the .8, and a little bit of sample here. And then here we have the 1.8. So you can see that between the three different nibs that uh, there is a, a fair amount of line variation and that if you're into calligraphy then you could uh, do a, a decent man, uh, amount with that. This pen does come with uh, an ink bottle. Uh, it comes with the house brown ink. Uh, this is what the online brown ink looks like. Uh, I think it's something fairly similar to the Mont Blanc toffee brown uh, or even something like the uh, Seitz Kreischnack chestnut brown. They're all kind of in that same family. So, thanks again go out to online for providing this pen for review and for giveaway. Uh, don't forget to go up to uh, either leave a comment here on YouTube or go up to my Instagram at figboot11 and find the comment or find the uh, picture uh, of this pen and leave a comment on there to be entered. So, until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.